Hi, thank you for coming. And uh, yeah, I will. Yeah, we will talk about our uh, idea of accessible methods to build a smart noise filter. And I will do more like the background and the motivation part. And uh, Iceland, who implemented it, will speak about the technology. I will try to keep it short. So. To speak about myself, uh, I'm um, up to make uh, open technologies uh, free and accessible. So I went, for example, to IREC just to uh, work with pupils, or I went to Brazil for uh, the human right of uh, internet access. And uh, I came up to um, Build a smart noise filter. So, what was actually the motivation behind? It's a kind of very personal in that moment. Uh, so, uh, I have some hearing problem myself, and uh, I went to a doctor, and he's calling, call, saying me, um, I have a blast trauma, like from a shot or something like that. I was never shot, you know. Uh, and then I remembered, I, I know a shot. I know I made rim shots when I was playing drum set. So that's actually killing my good hearing. And um, so it looks like this. When you look my hearing curve, it is like the higher the higher bands I don't hear really. And um, this is, uh, for some reason, it, it's a similar problem like many people have. I will explain this later. So uh, I thought... I tried out some hearing aids and I found out this um, is not really, I mean, it's uncool. I mean, design is uncool. Sound is uncool. Uh, not self-fitting is also really uncool. If you like up to open technologies, it sounds strange that somebody tells you what you should hear. It's no good. So I made up the idea to, um, yeah, to, to do something about it. And I found also out that Many, many, many people have these problems. It's about, I mean, think about it, 360 million of people all around the world. And uh, many of them don't even have access to health care. And uh, most, as like a quarter of us, uh, older than 65, will have a problem with hearing aid, quite similar like my one. And mostly people don't use hearing aids because of the reasons I have to. And uh, so I thought it's not only affecting me, it's affecting a lot of people. So I should do something about it. And um, I started a um, scientific research, a citizen science project together with other people think about open source technology for hearing support. And uh, it's still running. It's at Fraunhofer IDMT. Oh, here you can read it not on my laptop. Yes. Um, so we're going to have also a hackathon soon. I mean, you can speak to me afterwards. But anyway, what's important about this point is what I do is actually open source hearing aid algorithms testing in real life situations and people are self-fitting it. So I speak to a lot of people, what would you like to hear, what it's uh, a good sound for you, not only for people who have hearing problems, for all kinds of people. So that's actually, and then I, what I found out actually, is many people feel disturbed by noise, all kind of noise we are surrounded with. Um, traffic noise, for example, I mean streets, trains, er airplanes, uh, all kind of power stations, uh, machines. Uh, air conditioners, uh, all kind of coolings, and even little, not so loud noises can make, can uh, cause stress, like this electric counter, uh, or beamers, other video projectors, we say in German beamers, uh, video projectors, it's usual that I feel disturbed, while, uh, because often the video projector is between the listener and that one who's speaking, so it's hard to understand. So, or even subwoofers, or it's also little like sounds like the keyboard pressing, which can disturb. I think everybody knows this from from uh, office situation, <laughs> making crazy. And um, so, actually, it's like a whisper. I would guess such a. a pressing of keyboards, and uh, this is not for the German statutory uh, accident insurance below 30 decibel, 
decibel, like uh, this pressing of keyboard, um, is not noise. You wouldn't get any protect for your for your work. And if you go uh, up to 80 decibels, it's traffic noise. You should actually wear ear protection. So it makes sense for lots, lots of people to do something about it. And it's also also kinds of things uh, like the cocktail party effect. I think you know about this, that when a lot of people are speaking, when you start to have a little bit of problems or when you're tired, it's hard to listen to one's noise. So the idea is what could we do just to turn it off? So... I thought about make a selective personalized noise filter, and that's the point where I met Iceline. And the idea behind is to make it accessible, means open source, to use open source databases, to uh, make it transparent, makes a deep learning algorithm transparent, means that you have a user-controlled machine learning, and um, that you, I mean, also share the knowledge and involve people in the development. And this is actually the Iceland part now, uh, because she took the whole thing to Jupyter Notebook, uh, involving deep learning and signal processing. All right, hi. Uh, I'm Aslan Rose. Another really important point that uh, we wanted the software to be able to do was to be able to run on, for example, smartphones or Raspberry Pis, another element of accessibility. And that meant so whatever algorithms or architectures that we implemented, we uh, pulled from research with a uh, you know, with similar goals of implementing good uh, sound filters and um, deep neural architectures so that they could be implemented on a smartphone. I uh, have a master's degree in uh, clinical linguistics, so of course I am the developer of this uh, software. Makes sense. <laughs> uh, I know that everyone must be familiar with clinical linguistics, but I'll humor you and explain it anyways. Uh, I basically studied how one can study uh, language processing and development in the brain by using uh, uh, language in all different forms, so measuring how people, uh, measuring uh, brain waves when people are reading, or how people process information uh, acoustically. Uh, but uh, we're here to talk today about a smart noise filter. We heard um, about uh, Peggy's motivation to build this, and I will walk you through a bit of the architecture and what that looks like. So let's say you are programming at home, home office, and uh, you open the window and you have, um, you know, the nice breeze, somebody's playing guitar outside, but unfortunately you also live on a street, so there's cars. How nice is that? Wouldn't it be so nice to be able to have, oops, oh good, okay, uh, have uh, the breeze in there with, with just the guitar and not the um, traffic? This is the goal of the software. Someday we would really love it to be able to um, doing this real time. It's not quite to that point yet, but um, it's on its way. It uh, is able to do this pulling from two fields, so digital signal processing and deep learning. By a quick uh, raise of hands, how many people are familiar with spectrograms? Ah, great, okay, so quite a few, not everybody. Alrighty, so whenever we have a, you know, this, our sound signal here, this is in the um, physical space. When we digitalize it, you know, it's, we all have seen this. It's a wave. It looks like this. But let's say you want to understand a bit more of what's in that complex signal. You apply the Fourier transform. There will be no quiz. Uh, so just know that the Fourier transform is an equation that when you apply it to, uh, for example, a uh, digitized wave or a sound wave, it uh, informs you or it, it, it uh, uh, shows what, uh, the frequencies that are in the signal and how much energy they have. So you're looking at right now a, a spectrogram of some traffic and music. This picture is then sent on to a convolutional neural network 
And uh, CNNs are a great uh, 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 form of uh, neural uh, network that works uh, very well in, um, you know, in um, uh, data efficiency. So if you need it running on a smartphone, the convolutional neural network is a great way to go. This convolutional neural network, it's been trained uh, to identify uh, um, annoying background noises, so air conditioning, traffic. Luckily, it identified traffic here, and it told the Wiener filter. Uh, now, the Wiener filter, there are many filters out there. Uh, for example, a spectral filter. A uh, spectral filter just takes this, um, like, basically spectrum, this, um, the spectrogram here, and it just subtracts it from the, the first signal, and what results is a lot of the times very annoying musical noise. Uh, it's, it's really ugly, despite the name. Uh, and what the Wiener filter does is in a low computational manner, it, um, it uh, is able to you know, reduce this specific kind of uh, traffic noise from the signal while also maintaining uh, as, you know, the, the least amount of distortion as possible. So here we have a nice filtered signal of just the, just the guitar. If there's anybody out there who feels like this guy, don't worry. <laughs> um, I, as I mentioned before, I do have a background in clinical linguistics. I got interested in acoustics and all that could be extrapolated from that signal and learned to build uh, helpful tools, um, specifically uh, knowing that researchers are training neural networks on speech data to potentially, uh, um, in a uh, very uh, early uh, point in time to identify if diseases are developing, you know. Um, not only does that help in uh, uh, identifying a disease earlier in, in, in the development, but it is also um, more accessible. So people across the planet could be able to uh, use that technology with their smartphone, for example. So that's what got me started. But it was one hell of a ride pardon, uh, it was one ride um, to get from there to here to developing this. And uh, so I had two goals well, um, in, in this process. One goal was to get a good um, sound filter running, but another one, at, using uh, deep learning, but another one was to uh, make the pathway a bit easier, particularly in the Python community, to do this, um, for people to do this on their own if they would like to. What I found to be missing in this, especially Python community, there's some elements there, which is great, but there's much room for growth. Uh, there, there are a number of resources to, you know, get into filtering or deep learning and everything, but what I found difficult, especially with sound data, was to actually interact with it. So I wanted to make this project a bit of a sound playground. Now, what do you need? For a playground, or what? What? What I think about when I uh, think of a playground, stress-free. Uh, you don't have to sit there and think about maintenance or whatever. You know, um, you get to have you know the jungle gym to climb around and the trampolines or what have you. So it it, it matches an interest, you know, for of people of all abilities and backgrounds. I uh, utilized both um, Jupiter Lab. And uh, notebooks.ai. How many of you use uh, those tools, Jupyter Lab and Notebooks.ai? Cool. All right. Well, for those of you who are not familiar, I'm glad that I could introduce you to this. Basically, what you can uh, do here is, um, you know, Notebooks.ai. They offer a place where you can upload actually uh, um, some information like data. I was able to upload some sample data for people to play around with. And Jupyter Lab just allows you to work with the code, see visualizations, etc. All right, so now what kind of um, playground activities are there? So let's say you're somebody like me who was coming from a definite not digital signal processing background. You want to understand a lot better, you know, what actually is going on. Uh, one example that I have here is this is a this is a um, a way uh, to you know create a signal. It's a very simple signal, uh, but I would see it. You don't have to understand all the code or anything like that. But for me, it was really difficult to penetrate that. I didn't know what I could do with that. I didn't know what all of that stuff meant. 
so in um, one of my uh, little playground areas, uh, this, again, you don't need to understand everything here, but the point is um, in uh, the... Uh, um, in the functions, um, is just simply uh, context. Context is added in these um, functions so that you know one can um, piece together. Okay, the unit circle. What is this? I didn't um, uh, think about the unit circle since high school, uh, but it is an integral element to understanding how to work with sound, whether that be. Uh, creation, manipulation, um, and uh, also analysis. The Fourier transform relies on the unit circle. Uh, and again, this Fourier transform, it takes what's um, in this time domain into the frequency domain. This time domain picture on the left, this like block of wave, you can't really see that much. In the, in the picture on the right, you can see there's three different uh, frequency signals in there. More information there. All right, so let's say you are more interested in filtering and you just want to see, can we use this um, uh, software to work with your own um, uh, problem in a low computational accessible way? Uh, here in another notebook, what's um, you can see here, I'm for, I can't um, play any of them for you, but you can uh, use data that has been uploaded here and ready for you, or you can also add your own files if you would like. Uh, you can play them within the notebook. And um, here are some, can you see? Okay, good. Um, here with noise.filter signal, the, the simplest implementation is just what you would like to save it under, and then this, the file that you would like to save it as, or um, th th that you want to uh, remove the noise of. All right, so you play it. The filter is, you know, either not strong enough, you know, let's make it a lot stronger. You can add another parameter. Where is it here? Um, scale. You know, I want to Im uh, increase the scale. All right, so let's you, you you increase the scale, but you know what? Even though it's a great wiener filter, um, you still hear some of this annoying musical noise and distortion. Uh, there is a post filter as well, and this post filter, um, it uh, it simply um, it, uh, aims to reduce that annoying, I don't know, annoying musical noise, if you like. All righty. Neural networks. There, I have noticed that there's a lot of uh, opportunities to work with, you know, computer vision, you know, with image recognition and everything, but not that much working with sound. So here, especially understanding what sound data is or what it looks like, Two um, of the most common uh, f uh, feature types. Uh, if you don't know this, it's okay. Uh, these are more keywords that you can maybe check out later. Are uh, MEL frequency capsule coefficients, or MFCCs, as well as log MEL filter bank energies. Uh, for me, it took a long time to understand um, kind of what, what these even just looked like. How, how do they differ? And here... Um, you can visualize, okay, so with this word, it's somebody saying zero. What does this look like in features of, you know, when um, the MFCCs are extracted, right? Uh, compared with the same word when um, these F-Bank features are extracted. Uh, here, you can actually see how sounds are being made. Zero. Oops, oops nope, that's not what I wanted. Um, so that's just an example of how to, you know, get more familiar with what you're actually working. Here, um, if you uh, continue working with sound, you'll come across windowing in, in a different contexts. But this is a windowing of feature extraction. What does it look like? What does it do to your data when you increase or decrease the size of your window or, you know, the shift? So here's an example. You have a window size of 20 milliseconds. Oh, gosh. Sorry. Wrong way. And versus down here, window size of 100 milliseconds. You can see the, the one below is quite a bit foggier and maybe not, uh, not, not so uh, helpful. Training your own classifier. Uh, what I like about this is um, this is based off of a pretty simple convolutional neural network. Uh, you can um, train this data on uh, uh, either sound um, data, for example, traffic, like we did, traffic, 
uh, air conditioning, or also on speech. So here I was actually able to upload a small segment of, a uh, small section of the uh, Google speech sound, a uh, speech commands data set here. And um, just being able to get a, a bit of a, of a feeling for how um, training a neural network on these two different data types, speech versus um, sound, or sorry, room background noise, how that uh, influences uh, training of the model. Now let's say you want to, you know, expand your skills in um, building your own architectures, uh, trying out different filtering techniques, or just manipulating a little bit what code you see of, up there. You have the source code right there in the notebook. Here's an example. Um, the model here is defined, or is, uh, uh, like the architecture is put together here. All one would really have to do is go into um, this function here and try out another kind of functionality or another kind of architecture that you would like to explore. Maybe you would even want to try a, a long short-term memory network. Uh, you can, um, you have the uh, ability to go into that code yourself and adjust it. Easier said than done, I know. <laughs> um, all right, so now the question that I have for you is, given your own unique experience as well as educational background, what would you like to do with, you know, sound yourself? Ours looked like this. What might yours look like? And now I will give the stage back to Peggy to talk about our future visions. Oh, I need some amplification. Hey, I'm back again. So uh, it's a, a very complex and beautiful implementation. And... Um, but it's still hard to make it real time in real life. So it sounds so cool by deep learning to just switch off sound you don't like, but actually at the moment we are happy if we can do it on sound files. And, uh, you know, take a sound file, let the filter running through it and have a clean, more or less clean sound file. And, uh, so for future ideas, there's loads, loads to do. So, uh, on one side, make the delay perfect. That sounds real time. On the other side, it's still working on, on, only on laptop. Put it on a mobile device. For example, use Raspberry Pi. We have some, uh, hardware set up, like for the other project, we could take for it. Would be amazing. Uh, and the other point is, uh, open data is, is, big, big issue because uh, in the meanwhile, even the research, we have problems um, to have enough, especially sound data to train our systems. So we just should think about it, uh, how could we support and get more open data and do we want to develop something on open data? Uh, and yeah of, yeah, of course, it would be perfect to have open data you use together with a cloud, with uh, with an app. You can feed, you can exchange data, you can even exchange presets, you know. Like you say, uh, I'm standing here in front of Cosmos and I'm in the cloud and I have my headphones on and, ah, yeah, I see Peter, he has a good, uh, very good database and a good filter presets. Let's take his presets off. Perfect, you know, uh, like with uh, cableless, for example, um, Bluetooth headphones or earplugs. It should work. Okay, so I am still sticking on it to develop it further. Uh, speak to me, join Paxlab Space, which is actually the label uh, I'm running, and, and I invite you to uh, to join. And, uh, yeah, of course, we have the repository. Uh, if anyone wants to contribute, we are really, really very happy. Uh, if you want to go on with Iceland Sound Playground, do it. Support, just steam some debugging a bit. Uh, <laughs> necessary. And, uh, yes, uh, this I had. And there, there's the next meetings. Um, we have next, next Saturday, we have the uh, open source diversity workshop where we're gonna play around with a, um, with a Jupyter notebook. And, uh, for the, for the Braunhofer project, um, we're gonna have a hackathon. I invite you to, to join at the 8th and 9th of November here in Berlin. 
And we're going to speak also about the, the noise filter and other uh, open source implementations and uh, possible hardware uh, setups to realize that. It's also coming some uh, companies like uh, Becuring Aid, um, how you say, developer like uh, uh, Skylight. No. Okay. And, um, nah. and, yeah, okay. So if you feel like joining, speak to us. And yes, that's actually the end of our talk. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you, Peggy Nasden. Do you have any questions? Yeah, one second. Hello, uh, thanks for your interesting talk. Uh, I was just wondering, so you are using the CNN to identify the noise within a signal. Have you looked at more uh, like classical established um, noise filtering methods, like just taking a sample of the noise from a signal and s extracting it from the signal? I know this, for example, exists in um, like these Bose uh, noise cancelling headphones, for example. Mm. Yeah. Uh, one thing that uh, this software would also like to do, uh, one example is you're talking with somebody uh, and you hear some nice music in the background, but you also hear maybe some air conditioning that you would really like not like to have. If you were to just take the background uh, noise, you would lose maybe also the music that you would really like to have as well. Um, so that's, that is kind of the direction that we would like to go in is maybe uh, source separation. So being able to separate these sounds, which is difficult to do when we just have one microphone. And right now we just have one microphone. Imagine your head just with one ear. It's a lot more difficult. We use the two ears a lot to help us focus our, our um, attention. Um, but that with in with our with the mind in um you know which direction we want to go into and that is more to choose which sounds we want to be able to experience just taking a you know a block of background noise doesn't really allow us to get to that goal hi hey, thank you very much for the talk and for sharing your vision um Maybe two questions. First one, uh, if you could tell us, tell me a little bit more about the uh, potential you see for learning these filters that you'd like to apply. And second, any architectures you see like available right now, something you prefer for maybe deploying on microprocessors? Anything? So, my questions. Thanks. Okay. Well, uh, the learning for the filter, what exactly? I don't quite understand what you mean there. What do you mean? Uh, I was thinking if these, these Wiener filters, mm -hmm are of low computational complexity maybe these are like i don't know it's like one filter that you sort of hard sort of hard code it and you just apply it and maybe you could adapt this or learn this from sounds and from noise or so i don't know because because it's new to me i was wondering um yeah uh well, i mean it would be cool this is all definitely an explorative um field uh I think this was uh, the f the first version um, to see that it could actually work. How can we use um, deep learning? And like I have, I have a background in applying deep learning to sound, so that's why we went first um, applying it to actually you know scene recognition. Um, but I'm also interested in how you know we can apply machine learning techniques uh, in you know the 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 actual setting up of the filter and that is yeah somewhere down down the road i i don't know yet um and I'm, regarding the architectures um it one one issue there is uh what your goal is uh that um this is the first time that i've ever tried to get something running on for example a smartphone or a like a small device and, um, you know, I, I always thought about getting something up on the cloud. And, you know, if you are trying to get something running on the cloud, you have a lot more freedom as to what, you know, what kind of architectures you want to use. So that's something that you need to consider is what, what do you want your end purpose to be? And that can result in quite a variety in um, your architectural choice. <laughs> so for, for the hardware, we're asking about the hardware. So I mean, uh, there is actually something like this uh, running on uh, on very fast smartphones, like on the Pixel and an iPhone, but it's only the high 
and smartphones at the moment doing so. And, and it seems like it is necessary that you need a code which is quite made for the for the processor to make it perfect. So we have some open source um, um, processors, which are, but they are not up to date at the at the moment. So this would be another issue to, to think about. Make uh, take this open source processor, uh, I say, a processor and make it new. There are some uh, research projects, big research projects, uh, which are also uh, making making up new uh, new processor generation for hearing support, but they're all closed source. And um, yeah, and there's also uh, this. Um, I mean, it's, just, it's there are different uh, different things about uh, the, the thing about. For example, the wireless um, issue is also a big issue because you have a, a big delay uh, for the USB usually, but you have the next generation of uh, uh, USB now from from uh, iPhone, which is actually going in real time. And there is also another idea to to see when this next uh, is the USB 3.0, uh, 3.0, uh, when it will be it's three, isn't it? Um, the new version, when it will op uh, be open source, it will be also a big possibility to uh, to make it happen without wire, because wires are always disturbing. This is uh, this is very, I mean, in in practical, this uh, yeah. Are we, are we running out? Okay. So we speak afterwards. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. <laughs>